If your dream holiday is sailing off into the sunset, then the good news is cruising's never been hotter. But if you're anything like me, you'll be looking for something with a personal touch. So how about chartering your very own hotel barge for a week of sailing and sampling the gastronomic delights of Burgundy? This beautifully restored barge began life in Britain, built by a hardy band of Scottish women to ship guns and ammunition to London during the First World War. Now, instead of bullets and bayonets, it's all about bikinis and basking in this glorious sunshine. This grand dame of the canal is tricked out with every creature comfort. From a la carte dining to queen-size reclining, she simply oozes charm and classic style. La de Vivre is just one of a fleet of 30 fabulous floating hotels operated by European waterways. And to tell me more, I caught up with a very able crew. So my name is Laurent and I'm the captain of the Art de Vivre. And what I like about my job, it's pretty much everything. It's the people I meet, the people I work with, the canal, the barge, the scenery, burgundy, everything. Hi, I'm Sarah and I'm the chef from the Art de Vivre. I love the fact that we get to go out and we get to um, source some really nice small producers locally and um, bring it all back and cook it up for the guests and show them what Burgundy is all about. I think the fact that we've got a team from all over the place, we've got French, we've got English, we've got Guadeloupian, a little Caribbean touch and um, we just bring it all together and give the, the guests a bit of a multicultural experience, that's what makes their holiday. My name's Bonnie, I'm a hostess on the Art de Vivre. I love Burgundy and our canal is just sleepy, peaceful, picturesque. We pass by the Charolais cows and their funny fringes and see swans when I wake up in the morning and it's just ideal. But I soon learned there's more to barge cruising than sedentary sightseeing and got hands-on helping navigate our way through the ancient locks. If this looks like too hard work, there's always the onboard bikes to make your escape. Time to give my sea legs a rest and do some sightseeing. Cycling the towpaths cancels out cabin fever and gives me a chance to explore the gorgeous flora and fauna along the Nivernais Canal. A dream location for any nature lover or artist wanting to find inspiration from the beautiful surroundings. Burgundy is one of France's most prosperous regions, loaded with art and architecture. It's a haven for culture vultures. This majestic undulating landscape has always been a magnet for tourists. And the Basilica in Vézelay is the jewel in the crown. Perched on the village hilltop, it presides over the valley once used as an ancient route built by the world's first tourists, the Romans. When the midday sun streams through the vaulted ceiling, it casts a path of light that guides worshippers straight towards the altar. But down in the darkened and cool crypt, the relics of St. Mary Magdalene are believed to be laid to rest. Since the Middle Ages, it's been a shrine. Christians come here to pray in the Basilica. Others come to this part of the world to worship in the sun. But my personal pilgrimage is for the food and wine. Traditional Burgundy cooking is all about rich red wine sauces and slow cooking. But to be honest, in this weather, it's the last thing I feel like eating. So I've found this restaurant in the village of Vézelé, where the chef uses local seasonal ingredients, but using lighter, contemporary methods. The main event being the Charolais beef. These happy grazing herds can only be found in the Burgundy region. The 
There's a wealth of local produce in Burgundy and I've managed to pull together enough of it to get this lavish picnic going. There's spice bread, which harks back to the days when Burgundy was part of the spice route. These little pastries are called nonnettes, meaning little nuns. While the Benedictine monks were out carving up the terroir for wine, the nuns were in the kitchen making pastries, and this is a typical one, cheesy puff pastry. Epoise cheese is a full-fat cow's milk, unpasteurised cheese washed in Mark brandy. And I know you're familiar with this one, Dijon mustard. But the history behind this is really interesting because mustard, originally in Dijon, was designed for medicine for the dukes in the 15th century who lived it so large they needed something to assuage their digestion. And who knew that our favourite aperitif, Kia Royale, was also from Burgundy? The black currants are grown locally and the fizz that goes with it is this gorgeous Cremant de Bourgogne. Not to be confused with champagne, that's a different region altogether. This is Burgundy's local fizz. One of the defining features of this lush little corner of the earth has to be its wine. Some of the world's most expensive tipples are produced right here in Burgundy. But it's a complex subject, so here's my quick blagger's guide to Burgundy wines. Burgundy's divided into five regions. Production focuses on two grapes, red Pinot Noir and white Chardonnay. Production unit is the Domaine, but the most important thing to remember of all is that all this is about the uniqueness of the land, otherwise known as terroir. And right now, I'm in the northernmost region of Chablis, renowned for its crisp, white wines. So I headed to the Domaine Servin, where old meets new. Wow, now that is what I expected to see, those lovely old casks, not like the stainless steel containers upstairs. This is the old way, this is what we're doing today, still uh, respecting the tradition. Uh, it still produces top quality wines. This is beautiful. How old is this oak? Some of the barrels are 10 years old. Amazing. Speaking of old and new, I'm fascinated. How does a, a wine expert from the new world infiltrate the old world in the middle of Chablis? It's not easy for a start. Burgundy is still a very closed area, uh, very traditional in their ways, and I was quite lucky. I met my French wife, Deby, who lives in the region, and it was in a time where Chablis was booming, uh, the exports were up, and they were looking for people to speak English, so I was lucky to, to kind of slide in that way. And speaking of exports, is it true that almost the entire production of Chablis goes elsewhere? 85% of Chablis exported. Uh, we sell over 25 countries. Um, at the moment, the UK is our main export uh, partner. They're taking one third of Chablis, uh, which is it's our biggest customer. Uh, Chablis was exported to the UK in the 10th century. It's got a big history um, and the English people love Chablis all over and they're very good connoisseurs. They know their, their Chablis wines and they keep them sometimes longer than the French. So. Okay, that's enough talking. Let's try it. Okay, away we go. The exciting bit. There. So what are we trying here? So this will be a, a Chablis Grand Cru uh, from last year's harvest. So it's last September uh, that it was harvested. So it's been in, in here now nine months. So you can smell it. It smells good. So an oak Chablis. Old oak, which means that there's not a lot of, you can still taste a lot of the fruit, a lot of the soil. Um, this just helps it age. Uh, it's very young. It's kind of grassy. Yeah, that's true. Light, dry, crisp. This is a wine that needs to age at least 10 years. What's tasting good today, 2000 vintage. Yeah. So something really made to age in the old way. And that's what the barrel does, helps it. It's going to be amazing. Mm. It tastes pretty good to me. It's good to me as well. <laughs> I've really been looking forward to this, so I've saved it till the last night. Sarah's created the ultimate classic beef bourguignon, slow cooked with the Charolais beef and local Burgundy wine. The beef melts like butter and the red wine reduction is rich and long flavoured. And since it's my last night, I've asked the crew to join me at my very own captain's table. Now I was lucky enough to charter La De Vivre all to myself, but this beautiful barge can host up to eight people. And with Burgundy just a few hours away from London by train, you too can experience the French rural idyll with a fantastic European waterways holiday.